हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द इन्वायरमेंट दिस वीक सीरीज ऑफ दृष्टि आई एस आई एम ऋतु एंड टूडे सेशन इज अबाउट इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्वायरमेंटल इवेंट्स विच हैड हैपन इन दिस वीक सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन टू दैट बिफोर मूविंग टू एनी पॉइंट्स ऑफ डिस्कशन आई वॉन्ट टू एक्सटेंड माई कंडोलिसंस एंड सपोर्ट टू द अग्रीव फैमिली हु हैव बीन सफरिंग फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इंडिया पाकिस्तान कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सो लेट स्टार्ट आर डिस्कशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी एक्सेस एंड बेनिफिट शेयरिंग रेगुलेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव देन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द लेपर्स द न्यू टारगेट इन वाइल्ड लाइफ ट्रैफिकिंग देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द आर्कटिक आउटलुक दैट हाउ वर्ल्ड इज लुकिंग फॉर द आर्कटिक रीजन एंड हाउ इंडिया इज लुकिंग फॉर द आर्कटिक रीजन and then we are going to talk about the himachal's dholadhar mountain range and this particular range has a lot of species so we are going to talk about one species which has been found at this range so let's start our discussion so our first topic is biological diversity access and benefit sharing regulation 2025 so as you already know that we do have biological resources but is it a question that all the biological resources are distributed equally or not and the answer is that those are not distributed equally and that's why we had made few regulations so that it should be distributed equally the knowledge should be distributed equally the resources should be distributed equally so the topic is the national biodiversity authority notified the biological diversity access to biological resources and knowledge associated there to fair and equitable sharing of benefits regulation 2025 to ensure fair benefit sharing from the use of biological resources and they had made few regulations so what are the highlights about it so benefit sharing linked to the turnover and all users who have an annual turnover rupees more than rupees Uh, one crore need to share their statement with the information on the resources used per year, and these are the turnovers, and then these are the benefit sharing uh, rate. So up to five crore it has been exempted. Then five to fifty uh, crore zero point two percent, fifty to two fifty crore zero point four percent, above two fifty crore zero point six percent. So they had demarcated, and we need to follow this thing. So we'll discuss some more aspect to it. uh high value biological resources so here we have some resources which have a high value such as red sanders sandalwood agarwood and what are the clause which we have decided on to that minimum 5% benefit sharing of sale auction value can exceed 20% for commercial use then we have also one norm and one rule for the digital sequence information and this has been newly included under the regulation digital codes of rna uh, dna proteins now considered part of the genetic resources so here what we can see that not only which we can see which we can observe which we can use even the resources which are in a digital form the data which are is in a, is in a digital form is also recorded and they are also called as resources then researchers and ip applicants must share benefit 10 to 15% of collected benefits retained for by the national biodiversity authority then cultivated medicinal plants exempt from benefit sharing as per biological diversity amendment act 2023 to support ayush and cultivation efforts so we have given exemption to some area also but here we have made some rules and we need to follow it because this has become very much contentious that we are using it we are utilizing it but we are not equally sharing it and that's why it has created a great divide so we'll discuss some more aspect to it access and benefit sharing so what is this access and benefit sharing so it ensures that monetary or non monetary arising from the use of biological resources must be accessible to people and must be beneficial to the people so here plants animal genetic material are equitably shared with source communities or countries suppose that we are producer of sandalwood and people coming from the abroad and they are utilizing it they are making it commercial but if it's uh, been commercialized at indian land and we are not able to take benefit of it so we must comply with that that why we are not able to take benefit of it then mechanism 
based on the prior informed consent and mutually agreed terms between users and providers of genetic resources then we have global framework governed by the convention on biological diversity then we have Nag nagoya protocol offers a legally binding structure for abs then cop 16 2024 kali columbia they had also finalized modalities for sharing benefits from digital sequencing for information and india has also implemented enforced through the biological diversity act and abs regulation 2025 so what this tells us that we do have rules on international uh, front we do have rules on national front the where we are lacking we are lacking in the enforcement and implementation so here we need to work hard so that it should be reached to the communities who are producing it and the community who are deserving to take benefits of these resources now we'll talk about the uh, leopards part new substitute for tigers in international wildlife trade as you already know that poaching wildlife trade illegal trafficking has become a norm and tigers leopards are the what you can say one of the biggest target of it so in the garb of ta uh, tigers leopards have been targeted and people are illegal trafficking illegal selling their products in the name of tigers so this is the news about that wildlife trafficking is increasingly targeting leopards as substitutes for tiger parts due to growing international demand especially in asia traditional medicine luxury goods and trophies so according to four paws organization a global minim, uh, animal welfare group so what they had said that what they had cited about it that around 12000 leopards or their parts were traded globally between 20 to 2023 so in just 3 years you can see the number that around 12000 this number is very huge despite leopards receiving the highest protection under site so we do have highest protection for leopards but still they are illegal traffic so if we'll talk about the another aspect of it leopards have lost 75 percent of their natural habitat due to the poaching habitat destruction many are new bred in captivity especially in south african region which has a weak legislation related to the breeding and that is creating more hurdle in terms of their protection and that is creating a market for the illegal trafficking and other things then uh, the lack of uniform global protection across big cat species allow traffickers to exploit regulatory loopholes four post calls for global cooperation and urges government to strictly implement sites regulation to end this dangerous and exploitative trade so what we have analyzed from this whole discussion that there has been poaching the number has been increased for the leopards and the tigers have become very rare so the demand for the leopards have been increased because people are confusing with the tigers and leopards and that's why we can see that some countries has weak legislation and they are making it as a trade so we need to make a strong policy because many countries had a different policies and that's why it loop has hole has been created so we need to create a strong policies where all concerned countries should agree so that we can save more leopards now we'll talk about the arctic outlook so earlier arctic was a discussion of peripheral but right now arctic is also taking a center stage and how it is taking the center stage just like the indo pacific region many competitors have been also arise in the arctic area so we'll discuss about it and this is the question in front of you that is India part of this competition or not? So the Arctic once a zone of scientific cooperation is now becoming a stage for geopolitical competition due to the climate change, resource access and the opening of the northern sea route. And major powers like Russia, China and the US are increasing military presence in this area and a new era of strategic defense has been developed here. So here we'll discuss. Uh, so, what is the India's outlook for the Arctic policy? Is India involved into such kind of thing or not? Yes, India has Arctic policy and India is interested into the Arctic region. Let's discuss how. So, it emphasizes climate science and sustainable development linking Arctic climate shift to South Asia's monsoon water security. However, it underestimates the rapid strategic changes in the region. 
while india maintains a scientific presence as an observer status in the arctic council it risk marginalization in emerging arctic geopolitics the china russia arctic cooperation the and its implication for the indo pacific challenge india's aspiration as a regional connectivity hub so what we here uh, we got to know that india do have a arctic policy but india is underestimating that it has becoming marginal in that policy because russia china is becoming big power they have made cooperation they have uh, stationed their military there so we should not underestimate the power of the russia and china and this area will become another kind of contested region just like indo pacific so if we'll talk that what india needs to do so india uh, to stay relevant in this region india must recalibrate arctic approach by institutionalizing arctic engagement beyond science partnering with arctic states on dual use technology and maritime awareness claiming a role in new arctic governance forum india must balance its climate diplomacy strategic engagement to avoid being aged out of the evolving arctic order so india must be active in this region and apart from the scientific that various scientists are very much interested in the arctic region and it's very good thing that we are taking uh, we are uh, interested in the scientific approach of the arctic region but what we are seeing that people are extracting resources people are also taking advantages of north sea route people are also stationing their military so india also need to work on to these fronts now we'll talk about the himachal dholadhar mountain range so in this range a new species has been found and the species name is european red admiral vanessa atlanta so we are going to talk about this particular species a widely distributed migratory butterfly species has been sighted and documented in himachal pradesh so first of all we should know the name of the species and this species name is european red admiral also known as vanessa atlanta and here what we can know that this is a species of butterfly and it has been sound sighted in himachal pradesh so this species was observed near dharamshala in dholadhar mountain range marking its maiden appearance in the country so this is about the species now we'll talk about the few uh, things related to the species that uh, we already know that it has been uh, sighted near the dharamshala Uh, which is 2500 meter elevation during a butterfly survey and the historic survey confirmed by the butterfly expert lovis garlani sometimes they can ask the name of the expert also especially in the pcs examination so you should know the name of the it's better if you know the name of the butterfly expert and the name of the butterfly expert is the lovis garlani increases himachal pradesh documentation butterfly species at to 440 so th those people who are preparing for himachal pradesh civil services this particular thing is very much important to them so here the species butterfly species rose to the 440 and previously re under reported from india the species was last recorded in south asia baluchistan which is in uh, news because of the india pakistan conflict so this particular thing is also very much important and its sighting in dharamsal may suggest an eastward range expansion along the eurasian corridor and why uh, scientists and why butterfly experts are predicting that because of the larvae feed which is stinging nettle which grows widely in the western himalaya so that's why people are expecting people are uh, thinking and speculating that because of its feed we can see and we had sighted this particular butterfly species well uh, if we'll talk about the scientific research and various other kind of exploration in this region we cannot be clearly state that and clearly say that such things uh, exist and this is the only region that because of the feed because of the uh, this particular region the butterfly species has been spotted in this region but we are speculating and we are still researching into this area so the species closely resembles the indian red admiral but differs in its distinctive crimson band and forewing spot the discovery has conservation significance and may lead to more studies because it will uh, give uh, an opportunity to butterfly expert and scientists to 
find out this species into different parts of the world and different parts of the country and how we can add more species into the butterfly index. Now we are going to talk about the practice question for prelims. So this is the previous year question. In India, biodiversity management committees are key to realization of the objective of the Nagoya protocol. The biodiversity management committees have important function in determining access and benefit sharing including the power to levy collection fees on the access of biological resources within its jurisdiction. Which of the statement given above is are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. So, you have to answer this. Now, we'll talk about the uh, with reference to European Red Admiral Butterfly, Vanessa Atlanta, recently in the news, consider the following statement. It was recently recorded for the first time in India in the Western Ghats. Its larvae primarily feed on stinging nettle Eutica diosa. It is morphologically identical to Indian Red Admiral. Which of the statement given above is our correct? 1 and 2 only, 2 only, 2 and 3 only, 1, 2 and 3. So, kindly answer. Let's discuss another one. Which of the following region are contributing to the rising threat to wild leopard population? Habitat loss, mislabeling and illegal trade of leopard paths, captive breeding facilities with weak regulation, strict in uniform global legal protection. Select the correct answer using the code below. 1 and 2 only, 1, 2 and 3 only, 2, 3 and 4 only, 1, 3 and 4 only. So, answer this. Then we are going to talk about the Last one, with reference to the recent development in the Arctic region, consider the following statement. Climate change has played a major role in making the northern sea route more navigable throughout the year. The Arctic is witnessing increasing geopolitical competition among major powers such as the US, Russia and China. India holds permanent membership in the Arctic Council and operates a research station in Svalbard. Which of the statement given above is our correct? 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 3 only, 1, 2 and 3. So, you have to answer this into the comment section. And what are the key highlights of today's discussion? So, we had discussed about a species, European Red Admiral and how it is resembling to the Indian Red Admiral. Then we had discussed about the sites, we had discussed about the illegal trafficking of the leopards then we had also discussed about that how tiger and leopards have become vulnerable despite of having huge protection on them then we had discussed about the arctic outlook that what should be the india's outlook how world is looking for the out arctic so these are the highlights of today's discussion and these all things are very much important because in environment, they ask about the organization, they ask about the species, they ask about the pollution. So, you need to remember all these points because in prelims examination, they can ask related to such question. So, I hope you like this session. If you have any queries related to this session, kindly ask into the comment section. Thank you. Have a nice day. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.